Hey guys, so I'm going to walk you through the different options on the left hand side now so that you can further optimise your campaign and understand what is available to you. So this is an old campaign uh, for, for you know a, a website that I used to have. Well it's still live but anyway, uh, I'm not currently running ads but I wanted to show you uh, not a dead account basically. Um, so overview it's always going to show you the clicks the conversions and, and all that kind of stuff in this nice dashboard that's all overview does now recommendations google will always 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 give you recommendations whether you choose to take them on board or not is entirely up to you something like this where it's saying fix your disapproved site links you want to fix that and we'll go into what site links are later on add a video asset tell me to add a video so we can expand our reach in youtube again probably a suggestion that we could do get more conversions by adding or improving your assets so they're always going to say get that score higher um, add better pictures everything else they're also going to say set up a cost per acquisition so that you're within your budget but they're always going to tell you to spend more money as well so recommendations don't take them on board it's not always the right thing this system is designed to make you spend more so some of the recommendations are good but try and use common sense guys insights will show you campaign insights whether the campaign's active paused whatever uh, and so on and so forth and it will talk a bit about the, you know, if anything's broke or conversion tracking's not on. It's going to give you some diagnostics on your campaign, which is always good. Each account you've got, you can have multiple campaigns. So under campaigns, you're going to have test campaign or whatever you're going to set up. You might have geographic specific campaigns. So you might have one target in Glasgow maybe another one targeting Edinburgh, London, Liverpool, whatever. So you can set up different campaigns and different keywords to suit your business. Auction Insights is going to show you the URL, the overlap rate, the impression share, top of the page rate, and so on. It's a nice chart to show you how well your campaign is going. From there, you've got ad groups. You can look at the ads, uh, the ad groups that you've got set up. Now, you can look at the keywords and everything else as well under there. Um, but ad groups just shows you the different ad groups that you've got. And you can go in and call them different names. So that could be the Glasgow ad group, whatever. You can just go in, click save, job done. Ads and assets now earlier on in the previous video you would have seen me putting in all the kind of different stuff now that's called a responsive search ad now i could go in and i can do a call ad a responsive display ad or an ad variation and i can go in there and basically create variations of the same ad maybe tweaking some of the titles and so on so you can go in and use various ads but a responsive search ad allows you the 15 headings, the four descriptions, and what will happen is Google will rotate all of that stuff and it will continue to serve the best formula, the one that seems to get the most engagement and the most clicks. Assets. Now, for your business, you can go in, you can add your business name, your logo, your site links, your call out, your structured snippet, your lead form, your location, all of this stuff relating to your business, you can add into the campaign using the assets section. And you can use those assets on your ads. So you don't have to fill them all out, but the more you put in, the better. So for example, location, we can go in, create an asset, and basically put a a Google map location that would be set up and put that in there um, as well. So it all ties in with your ad. So you can do all of that kind of stuff. You can simply put a call extension in 
and you can put in your phone number or if you've got multiple or different phone numbers for different campaigns. All of that stuff goes in here, guys. Landing pages. Now, um, this is the landing pages. So if you've got multiple campaigns going on, it will show you the landing pages that you've got, the mobile site speed score, and the clicks and impressions and click-through rate. So it gives, gives you an idea as to whether your landing pages are effective. Keywords. This part is really important, guys. Like I said in the earlier video, you can go in and add more keywords if you want to. That is entirely up to you. You can click Test Campaign, Glasgow, and go in and add more keywords if you want to. And click Save. Job done. They will be added. Make sure that you do change these to Phrase Match. Um, it's quite important that you do that so you don't hem these too much money. Next one down, negative keywords. Now, you want to potentially put negative keywords in here so that your ad does not show, especially if you're on broad match, your ad doesn't show when certain words are used. For example, free SEO audit. If the word free comes into it, put free in here and your ad will not show for anyone who's looking for free stuff when they're doing their searches. So you can put in free, cheap, all of these kind of different things because if you've got stuff on broad match, your ads are likely to show even if someone adds in free, cheap, budget, low cost, whatever. So you can filter your ads out from showing to people who use those search queries. So negative keywords can work very, very well. You put them in and go down to save. Search terms just shows you all of the different search terms, the match type and everything else. Auction insights, again, more data. Audiences. Audiences. Now, this will show you more data based on your audience, the type of audience, the age, the demographics the household income, and all of that kind of stuff. That is important uh, if you're creating other campaigns and you want to segment your audience or maybe target females only because you feel that the campaign that you're doing targets the female audience. You can do all of that kind of stuff uh, and you can collect all of that data there. Content, placements, exclusions, where ads showed. Again, all data uh, for you to understand where your ads appeared. Um, now, you can exclude your ad from being, um, so I can go in here and I can select campaign, test campaign, and I can put in uh, YouTube channels if I don't want my, my um, ads to show on a specific YouTube channel, I can go in there and set all of that up. Um, settings. You've got campaign settings and you've got account settings. We'll uh, go into general settings, campaign settings. So it will show me the budget, the status of the ads, target um, cost per acquisition. I put it 10. Type of campaign, the networks, ad rotation. You can also add in a start and end date. So you can go in there and, and tweak your campaign under campaign settings you can also do other bits and bobs down here as well so locations will put in united kingdom now you might not want to just target the united kingdom it might be an area within united kingdom so it might be something like let's see liverpool so you can target Liverpool. Now, you may also want to just do Liverpool nearby. So if you click nearby, it will give you areas that are close to Liverpool, like Birkenhead, Cheshire, Lancashire. So you can add all of those in um, as and when you see fit. Um, so you can, again, you can save that. Now, again... That means those ads, if I put that location in, will only serve the people in that area. So that is very useful for people who offer local services uh, and stuff like that. 
Again, you can exclude certain locations as well. So if, let's say I'm in Glasgow <coughs> and I want to exclude a certain part of Glasgow. Um, no, I'm going to have to do Liverpool. Cert enter a location to exclude. So it could be, let's say, Bootle. I can exclude Bootle. So we'll just put red. So my ads will not serve in the Bootle area. So you can actually block out areas as well. Um, so that's something you want to consider. Per store report is obviously store listings, driving directions, local reach and all that kind of stuff if you're doing the kind of map um, stuff. Um, ad schedule. Now, when you look at the data that the your AdWords uh, gives you and you find out that your ads only really get conversions, let's say between 8 in the morning and 12 in the afternoon, you can go in and change the times that your ads show. So you can show these ads Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. till 12 noon or whatever suits you. So I had a pest control guy once and uh, he felt that his calls all came between 8 and 12. That's exactly what he done. He didn't want to pay for ads at night time because that wasn't for him. Um, those were all low quality clicks. You can um, do it day per hour, all that kind of stuff. You can also bid to people on specific uh, devices. Now, people are using a wide variety of devices. Uh, devices. I wouldn't be clicking on anything there yet, but you can adjust your bidding based on the devices as well. Um, experiments, you can set up experiments in here as well. So you could do a video experiment you can optimize text ads, you can do performance max campaign, it's entirely up to you. You can have little experimental campaigns down here. Performance targets, again, more data. Um, it's all data driven there. So that is me pretty much covered everything that's on the left hand side. Um, next video, I am going to talk you through the most important things that are on that left hand side and the ones that I tweak to get the most success.